We're going to begin with our national correspondent, John Moan, who is live in Tampa. And John, how has this storm progressed while you have been out there? Uh, you know, just depending on the side of the building we've been on, uh, the, the wind speeds are a heck of a lot more dramatic on this side. I'm going to step out of the way here. and We're in downtown Tampa. Uh, you can see uh, the, the palm fronds here blowing a little more briskly. At times, we get wind gusts anywhere from 40 uh, to even up to 60 miles per hour. Uh, you can see in the distance there, uh, there is some pitch that was blown off one of the rooftops of the high rises here. Uh, again, when we were gathering video, uh, pitch flying around and, and causing a nuisance and certainly a danger for us. So we were stepping out of the way and getting uh, under the cover uh, of this awning at our hotel. I uh, also want you to take a look at the big picture here. Hurricane Ian made landfall around 3 p.m. in the area of Calla Costa or close to Sanibel Island in the Fort Myers area. That area is taking the brunt, uh, took the brunt of this storm. I want to show you some video from colleagues at our sister station, WFTX. Uh, it's video in from Sanibel Island, and you see uh, buildings are getting pounded by howling winds. The door is being blown out of a building, and then you see uh, hotel staffers bracing those doors shut, uh, basically showing us how powerful those whipping winds can be. Uh, again, those wind gusts uh, expected with the Category 4 storm when it hit to be up in upwards of 155 miles an hour. A wind gust even inland in the Florida Peninsula, uh, like in Arcadia. Oh, we're getting some more wind gusts here right now. Uh, in Arcadia, Florida, we're well past 95 miles an hour, uh, so wind damage is obviously going to be a huge factor. But then when you go back into Fort Myers, we are seeing lots of scenes of street flooding. In Tampa, the wind gusts, as you can see, have ticked up modestly. Uh, they're not quite as bad as what they were down south of us. Uh, but the other issue here is the worry about storm surge. Again, a lot of the Tampa Bay has been drawn out into the Gulf. Uh, and again, the worry is, is when the tide comes back in, uh, will it be aided uh, by a lot of push from Hurricane Ian. Officials telling people if they wander out into those extended shorelines uh, to not do it in the first place, and if they are doing it, to get back inside immediately. Uh, this storm is dramatic. It spans right across the Florida uh, Peninsula. It is a mega storm. Uh, more pictures from further inland in Sumter County. Uh, we saw thou uh, hundreds of power trucks staging to respond to power outages, and we have many of them across the state of Florida, and upwards of a million at this point. We'll get more details about that later, uh, but crews are coming from around the country to help. And at this hour, again, uh, sorry, we're getting more wind gusts here, but earlier uh, today, Governor DeSantis held a news conference urging people to take caution and seek shelter immediately. Well, this afternoon, Hurricane Ian is now making landfall in southwest florida with winds of 155 miles per hour and that is just shy of a category 5 hurricane 155 mile an hour winds are incredibly dangerous uh, there will be debris in the air and flooding powerful enough to move cars around yeah and again uh, governor DeSantis saying the storm is expected to exit out of florida uh, by thursday evening out by daytona it's going to curve around and up uh, into Georgia and South Carolina, looking at least from NH uh, National Hurricane Center data, uh, into Georgia and South Carolina as a tropical storm. Del. John, be careful down there. John Moan live from Tampa, Florida. A reminder of this storm coming ashore just after 2. It is now almost 7.10. Look at the winds that you saw in John Moan's live shot. Our national correspondent, Natty Guajardo, is also live for us in Tampa, and she's been watching the storm since it came on shore this morning. And, Natty, what can you tell us from where you are? Yeah, Dell. well, there is downed power lines out here in Tampa. There's also downed trees, and we're not talking about just small trees. We're talking about major trees that have fallen down in the middle of the road. Tampa PD telling people to get off the road. This is not a time to go out and sightsee. They're also asking people not to use water during this storm. The mayor telling people don't be fooled by what you're seeing, which was a reverse storm surge, saying that we can expect some flooding here in Tampa. Also reaching out 
further down south. The mayor says she reached out to Naples and other cities nearby that are going to be impacted at a much greater level to offer their help as well. Now, there are more than 200 shelters open across the state of Florida. More than 50 of those are for people with disabilities. We went to one of them here in Tampa earlier today, and we spoke to people. One of, the, one of them told me that the reason they needed to get out of their home is because they were just scared of trees coming down and just falling on top of their home. Listen to what they had to say. Last hurricane, they didn't really have zones like that. They didn't have like zone A, B, C, or D. Then they're talking about massive flooding. And last one, it wasn't massive flooding. It wasn't. It was just rain, and it just went off somewhere else. It didn't come here. And we had a mandatory evacuation, so we had to go. Did you have anywhere else to go? Not really, no. And I didn't want to spend the money that they're gouging us for the hotels. So I live on the third floor, and so there'd be no AC. And if it got really hot, I'd suffer. And who knows when it would be repaired. And we're still in the thick of this storm. I know a lot of people are thinking about what am I going to do right now? But really what's going to set in is what is my house or my home? What kind of shape is that, is that going to be in right after Governor, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis saying that they are going to be seeking the help of volunteers to help people rebuild where it is necessary. Right now, there are more than a million power outages across the state of Florida, and it could take days before that power is restored. We know DeSantis is saying that there's more than 42,000 linemen on standby that are going to help restore that power, but how quickly they can get out to restore it, uh, only time will tell. Del.